So number one question I think that everybody is wondering and probably always is wondering is that with so many new products that flood the market each year, how do you choose the ones that are actually worthy of making Allure's Best of Beauty Award? I know, and with something like 10,000 products to launch each year, it's a daunting task. And then you've got, <laughs> then you've got all the products that you know and love that have been around and are on the, already on the market. So Exactly, so, exactly. Yeah, so what we do is we keep all of the classics and all of the products that we love in mind all the time, obviously. Okay. And then we get in all of the new products um, for the year that have launched, you know, between... Um, or actually, it's in, in that year, so 2012. And um, this year, we actually tested about 2,500 products. Oh my God. <laughs> and it's, you know, all of the Allure editors are testing, and we're experts in the field. We're testing everything, hair, makeup, skincare. And then we also will reach out to dermatologists, cosmetic chemists, makeup artists, hairstylists, and they also weigh in, and they tell us, you know, what they like, and they also look at the products that we've selected and give us their input and let us know what really works on their clients. So. And the science and technology. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, so that's how they end up getting picked, and we pick the things that really just deliver and give the best results. And that makes sense. I mean, it, it seems so daunting to have to go through such a sheer mountain of stuff. Yeah. And there are so many things launched all of the time. Mm -hmm. And it's certainly not a level playing field by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> no, no. So with, with, with that sort of in mind, Allure's Best of Beauty Awards unquestionably influences beauty product buying habits. And it oh, really yeah. does take the guesswork out of the equation for the consumer. Mm -hmm. Does that knowledge make it easier or does it make it harder to choose the best products on the market? Because you know that people, they, we see your label and we buy. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think we've been doing, you know, th like you said, this is our 16th year. Right. We know our beauty products inside and out. And right. um, we also, you know, we trust our, our judgment. And then, again, we look at the clinicals, we look at the ingredients and... Um, you know, we really feel confident in the end and very proud about what we've done because we're really behind these products. Absolutely, absolutely. And we've put them on ourselves. I mean, we've walked around with the manicures. We've tried the thickening sprays. We've exactly. flat ironed our hair. So we've exactly we haven't we've we've road tested these things. <laughs> well, and it's ostensibly the same thing that I do on the blog when I'm trying these things and then I, you know, review mm -hmm. them. Yeah. So I totally, I understand. And it's, it, it, it can be sort of difficult because, as I said before, not all products are created equally. No, no. So uh, what, what surprised you the most about this year's list from any of the categories, including the breakthrough category? Um, you know, I think, and I was thinking about it, um, I think what surprised me actually was a lot of the products in the breakthrough category because now our breakthroughs are the section that honors the most innovative groundbreaking, pro bra ga ah, groundbreaking <laughs> products of the year. Um, so they've really got new science, new technology that is looking to Im improve products that are already out there and also just solve basic beauty problems. And that's the keyword, basic beauty problems. Right. All of these products that are in front of me, as well as the rest of our breakthroughs, because there's there's even more of them, um, right. they're, they're actually providing solutions to some of the th basic problems that we've been hearing over and over for years. So frizz, right. Right. long wearing lipstick, which has always been a problem, clumping mascara, which is just one of the most annoying things that can happen with your mascara, um, rosacea, we're seeing lots of innovation in treating not just the redness and that's happen, happening with rosacea, but the actual causes. So, Which is, yeah, that yeah. makes much more sense to really treat the root rather than the symptom. Exactly. So I found it surprising that, you know, none of the, you know, these breakthroughs are really looking at the most simple problems and finding solutions, which I think is great. Right, and, and really we're talking about innovative technology, so things like the Armani Maestro Fusion mm -hmm. Makeup, which is just so different than mm -hmm. anything else that's in the market yes, right now. Yes, definitely, definitely. So from this list and from the things that you saw, what are your your own personal favorites that you saw uh, this year? My own personal favorites, um, non-breakthrough, real quick, has to be the Yves Saint Laurent In Love Fragrance. Um, I spritzed that thing on and haven't stopped wearing it since. Um, really? Yeah. So oh, I'm really, going to have to check it out. <laughs> really beautiful everyday scent. Um, but in the breakthrough categories, which I'm very excited to present because I'm, I think really what they're doing this year is 
is just so helpful for women. Um, and the first one being the CoverGirl Lash Blast Mascara, the new Clump Crusher, Crump, Clump Crusher, Crusher Mascara. This yep. is uh, <laughs> definitely That's a tongue twister. <laughs> yes. That's on my list. Now, you know the Lash Blast formula. It's a great, it's a great formula. Pat McGrath loves this formula. I, you know, all of us at Allure, the waterproof, the right, you know, it's great. And they've made it even better because, and it's not the formula that this switched, it's actually the brush. And what they've realized is that volumizing and thickening mascaras, they're a little bit heavier formulas to give you that fullness. So you, there are a lot of waxes and clays in them that form clumps between the bristles of the brush. So when you comb it on, it combs the the clump onto your lashes. So what they've done, they actually measured the average size of a mascara clump, which they found was something like 325 microns, which I imagine is very tiny. Um, and they arranged the bristles on the blush, they're nylon bristles, and they arranged them close enough that a clump is never ever going to form. So you can really coat this thing on and you're not gonna get any clumps or spidery looking lashes. It's That's really brilliant. fabulous. Yeah. That's brilliant. Now, why didn't somebody think of that long ago? <laughs> I know. Oh, and it's so seems... simple yet so brilliant. Exactly, and that's what I was talking about with those surprises. You know, it's like that's amazing. Yeah, that is amazing. Here's one for you. Were there any correlations between this year's list and the recent New York Fashion Week? Mm, well, I just got back from Milan and Paris and I New York. You had. <laughs> so I was there. Um, I'm trying to think. Well, we definitely saw a lot of straight, sleek hair on the runway. Um, and not just straight, sleek hair, it, it, they were using flat irons to do it, but they were also using flat irons to create different styles, to curl the hair in a different way than you would with a curling iron. I saw Orlando Pito do it, and Guido, and all of the greats that are back there in all four cities. And oh, interesting. So what's really exciting is that we all know how damaging a flat iron is. It's like, you know it's bad for you, you know how damaging it is for your hair, but you don't stop doing it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, so what cool way, the scientists at this company called Cool Way have figured out is how to give you those same smooth and shiny results, but without without using that intense heat. This actually will never get over to 199 degrees Fahrenheit, but it will give you the same sleekness, the same shine as any of your other flat irons. So it's a two-step process. There's a, a prep spray that you spray into dry hair. I um, see it. It's I an see amino it. acid blend, or amino acids that push water into the hair. And the more water in the hair, the less heat you need because the water's going to evaporate and it's also moisturizing the hair. So it's not as dry. Interesting. Then you run, yeah. No, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, then you run the flat iron over three times, just as a little test patch, and it calibrates, it uses smart technology to calibrate not only the texture of your hair, but the moisture level inside of it and the humidity outside. And then it gives you the exact temperature you need, no more, no less, and that's what you get. The women that used it, they found, the stats on this are insane. It's like 300, it improved damaged hair by 300%, um, improved breakage, you know, cut frizz in half, so. Wow. Really, and you know the hairstylist Nunzio, who is a great hairstylist here in New York. Um, he came to me at a shoot we were doing and was like, "Have you tried this? You have to." And I was like, "Actually, it's on our breakthrough list. Like, we're, I know, so I we're all say, on the same amazing. page." <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. I yeah. love it. Talk about sort of synchronicity. Yes. Yes. So, what are your personal desert island holy grail beauty essentials? <laughs> Ah, okay. So, and thinking from our list of, of great beauty products, um, oh, I always like to have makeup wipes. So we included a set from Simple Skincare, which you can get at the drugstore, which are, you know, a great inexpensive product that works really well. Um, also Desert Island beauty products. You know what, maybe I would take my Sally Hansen at home gel manicure because I would have a manicure on the desert and it, or on a desert <laughs> island awesome. for a while. Awesome. Um, what, you know, Sally Hansen launched the strips last year and we awarded it a breakthrough um, award when that came out because of how amazing those strips are. They're actual polish, you stick them on and you're done. This, they now have included a mini LED light and a gel top coat. So you can get your own gel manicure at home with the strips. You don't even have to paint anything on except for that top coat. But oh it is mess God. free. And look at how cute this little LED light is. Yeah, it's um, totally, totally. So I would do this and, you know, it only lasts 14 days, but that would be 14 days of oh. one shiny Desert Island manicure. <laughs> what about any, any special Holy Grail splurge products? Yes. Um, oh, 
Let me think. There's the um, the Prada candy scrub that we included in our splurges. Yes, that, that is so indulgent and so beautiful, and the fragrance is great. And we awarded that a Best of Beauty award when it came out, and now there's a it's in scrub form, and oof, I love that thing. <laughs> really? Yeah. Olea Luso is definitely one of mine. I oh love, yes, yes. I, I love. And love, especially love. with the changing of the temperatures, I'm exactly. putting that in our body, lo my body lotion now. To oh, absolutely. Amp it's up amazing. the moisture. Yeah, exactly. Um, the last question I have for you, I know you have somebody waiting for you, but I saw that you have a degree in art history, which oh. I do as well. Yeah. And I was wondering how that influences your beauty choices or the way that you do your job, because I know part of what you do is being responsible for reporting beauty trends and interpreting what you mm -hmm. see in New York, Milan, Paris. How, how does your background in that or as a ballerina, how do those oh. <laughs> things really affect what you do and, and how you see the world? World and how you interpret what you do. Wow. Um, well, I know being a, a ball. Well, I used to be a ballet dancer. That was probably my first love. In be entered me into the beauty world. You had to do your own hair. You had to do your own makeup. So at a young age, because my mom was not doing any of it, I learned <laughs> about products. I learned how to do my hair. I learned how to do stage makeup, um, and just found a love for products, and that really stuck with me. And you know, knowing people always ask, "How did you learn how to do that?" Well, when you're behind, the, you know, you're backstage, you have no choice. Exactly. You learn. You learn pretty quickly. Um, exactly. In art history, I just think, and you know, this is somebody that majored in art history as well, that you are able, you know, to see, you're able, you, you spent four years analyzing beauty yeah. and analyzing what other people think is beautiful. Maybe you don't see it as beautiful, but somebody else does. And, and, you know, looking at things and, and knowing about proportion and color. And, exactly. and I find in this, I find it also helps, you know, especially backstage, because you're working with makeup artists and hairstylists who reference a lot of these artists or yeah. who are, and who are artists in themselves talking about contrast and color and, exactly. and all of that. So it's, it, it definitely, plus with trends, you know, it, you see the same things resurfacing, and it's able. It's nice to be able to see things that come back, and what people, see, you know, and how people like to wear their hair. And, and not much has changed since the 18th century. It's true. <laughs> well, and what's interesting too is that beauty really is a socially sort of invented construct. Yeah, yeah. And you get to see how it changes, but how you know you'll see like plating in hair coming back, which is you know you can look at pictures of Simonetta Vespucci from you know the the, the 15th century yeah. with the same types of, of hair yeah. you know, styles. So well, it's, Helen, it was, yeah, it's so interesting. And, you know, it's been great that we've been able to share these products. I know we've got to wrap up, but um, I just want to let everybody know, um, you know, we got through a few products. We've got a in addition to our breakthrough awards, we've got tons of other over 200 award um, products that were awarded, and they can check it out on our website, allure.com, for the full list, and um, also the October issue that's on stand. So, Fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. No, for your thank time. you. Thank you.